Hey guys, it's Jordan from Countryside Sewer and Septic. Um, out here uh, on the property and want to make a video because it seems that uh, septics are something that people just do not have a good understanding of what they are, how they work, what to do, what to look out for. So I'm gonna try to answer some of the most uh, basic things about them uh, for you guys today. My company installs and designs septic systems in Northern Illinois. And um, so uh, let's go with, let's go for it. First thing that happens when you flush the toilet on a septic system, if you, if you don't have city sewer, you're gonna have a septic system. And if you flush the toilet, first place it's gonna go is a septic tank. Now, in this situation, that's a septic tank with the lid right there. This was located by using this tool right here, which is a probe, soil probe, okay? You can buy these at uh, online. I bought this one online. Um, some of the hardware stores like, a, like Menards or Home Depot will sell these. This one's fiberglass, and it will keep me from getting electrocuted in case I accidentally poke an underground wire. Um, you do want to like notify a utility company to to mark your utilities see as i have already done here uh, before you start probing the ground but to find a septic tank if the lid is not exposed short of using a hiring a plumber or a septic contractor with a camera is walk around your house i'm going to be pointing you guys directly at the sun here so up on the top right there is a four inch stack sticking up Nine times out of 10, when we locate the stack and we walk 10 to 20 feet out from the outside of the house, we can take the soil probe, start pushing through the ground and you can hear the septic tank. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna push the soil probe down and show you where, where this tank is located. So obviously you can see the lid here. This tank is, a, is an oval shape. And if I push the probe down, you can hear that's concrete there concrete there so okay and then what you want to do is take your probe poke around until you get a feel for the shape of the of the tank there are like marking flags or you can use marking paint kind of paint out where the concrete ends and then try to find the middle of that of that area and then take a shovel and start digging down and usually Hopefully less than a foot and a half down, you'll find a lid that looks just like this one. Usually this is a newer one, so it might not have handles, but it'll be about this size. Sometimes they're three, four feet across. And uh, you can pull that, and that's where your septic tank is. So when you're buying a house, have your septic tank pumped uh, right away. And the pumper will be able to tell you the frequency at which they recommend that your particular system is pumped. Typically on a tiny system that's like every year, um, healthy, good, big septic systems, like three to five years is great uh, between pumpings. So anyway, what happens in here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna save you the nastiness, is that there are some devices inside this tank that divert the water that you, that you flush, the wastewater, down to this middle section of the tank. And what goes down to the bottom of the tank is the settled solids that we call sludge. And at the top of the tank, up in the top like one foot, foot and a half of the tank, is fats, oils, and greases. These are the number one killer of a septic field. They're filtered out through this tank if the components are intact. Now these components are made out of concrete, plastic, fiberglass. Um, so when, it's, when you have it pumped, when you buy the house, that's why I'm saying have it pumped, get it cleaned out. And then the pumper can inspect those parts and say, can you look at my inlet and outlet baffles? Can you tell me if my tank's in good shape? Is it taking in groundwater? So that you can, you can know those things right off the bat and get those minor repairs taken care of before you have a larger problem out in the field. Okay. Next thing that happens, there's a line that comes out here. And then I'm going to try to show you this. So in this particular system, there's trenches. And... Here's a low spot in the yard going all the way down that way. Nine feet away, here's another depression in the yard, okay? Now again, if you've marked a, the property, you can use your probe. Now I'll try, I'll push down here. Okay. 
don't know if you can hear that or not. It's kind of a hollow sound. So that's the soil probe hitting gravel. So on this field, there's nine or so lines. This is an acre property that I'm on. And uh, I would say a third of it is dedicated to the septic field. So in this septic field is where everything that you flush into the septic system, all your wastewater is distributed, in this case, through pipes that have holes in them and gravel trenches that are two to three feet wide and maybe 18 inches thick. And the soil then absorbs and further breaks down what is not broken down in the septic tank, and then it disperses into the ground. And that's the cycle that, that the septic system does. So, you know, your plants, your grass, your bacteria in the ground, they're gonna continue to eat and break down the effluent, which is the partially treated wastewater that comes out of your tank. So here's a few pointers that I'd like to say because I see people uh, really getting themselves into situations that they cannot afford to be in. Um, if you're looking for a home and you're gonna buy a home on a small property that has a septic. So I would say a small property is anything under half an acre for a septic. If you have a corner lot and you have half an acre, that's also considered a small property. So if you're buying anything under half an acre, be aware that there's probably not enough land on that property to effectively treat your wastewater. And in that case, unless the septic system has been replaced with something more modern and more efficient, you can anticipate that you may have septic issues. The largest amount by far of septic issues that we see are people that buy homes earlier than 1980 where the septic has not been updated or people that buy homes on small properties. This system's from 1977. We're on an acre. We're conscious, conscientious about our wastewater, but we're also raising three kids, um, two people working, showering, um, laundry, you know, so we use a lot of water and we don't have a problem. This is from 1977 and we're on an acre and we have 400 feet of septic lines. If you're on a small property, you're just not gonna have that. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, size of the septic tank in a lot of areas in the country can be can be a thing. So in Northern Illinois here, some people are buying these houses with 200 to 500 gallon septic tanks. It's just not gonna handle wastewater. And now, especially with people working from home, think about all the water that you use at the house that you don't normally, uh, that you don't normally, that you'd normally be using at work. So anyway, um, be conscientious, spread out your water usage. You do run your laundry when you go to bed because when you're sleeping, you're not awake using a lot of water. Run your dishwasher and your laundry when you leave for work so that you're not at home while those things are running. Um, you know, the more, the more that you can divide up your water because what, what you need is to give the system time for the water to absorb into the ground in the septic field. If you have issues flushing your toilets, water coming up around your septic lid or black or gray oily water boiling up in your yard, that means that you have a large problem and more than likely your septic system is gonna to have to be replaced. So before um, you get to that point, it's good to get yourself educated when you're buying a piece of property as to what you have from a perspective of septics. See a lot of broken hearts when people buy a property and they think, oh, I'm gonna put an addition on or build a second house or build a big garage. And then they find out they can't because most of their yard is septic field. Um, that's just the way it is. That's what's required in, in this part of the country to put an effective septic system in. Um, I guess lastly, what goes down the toilet is what comes out of your body. No condoms, no diapers, no flushable wipes. Flushable wipes are the number one reason that plumbers make $100,000 a year. Flushable wipes will cause you major financial plumbing issues. Do not use wipes. If you use wipes, throw them in the trash. If you cook in a crock pot, dump your crock pot in the garbage can or out in the yard. Do not put crock pot contents down the septic. You should not have a garbage disposal. If you have a garbage disposal, you technically should have a second septic system for that. 
when we flush, our stomach has already broken all that stuff down. So if you're putting food down your septic system, you're gonna tax that system, the bacteria aren't gonna be able to keep up and your septic field will fail. Um, so septic safe single ply toilet paper is what we recommend. Um, you know, your laundry, your kitchen water, washing your hands, showering, bathing. But you really wanna do is try to consciously limit the amount of fats, oils, and greases that you flush down that toilet or down the sink because those greases are what end up clogging septic fields. So if you imagine that there's this long trench in the ground here and it's in the clay or black dirt and you're constantly getting oil and grease down these lines, then eventually what's gonna happen is, is sort of, you're adding a water resistant element to the ground. So the bottom of the trench and the sides of this trench are going to get totally uh, clogged with grease. Once that happens, there is no fixing it. You can't clean it out. You can't go hire a plumber to rod out the septic lines. People say, oh, I think it's clogged with roots. It's not the roots. The roots are drinking the septic water. The, the nine, 99 times out of 100, the, the trees that people think are causing their septic issues are actually making it better. And then if they have the tree cut down, the septic fail, field will fail two to three years later because that big, huge silver maple tree was drinking all your wastewater. Um, so anyway, post comments below. Let me know if you guys have any questions, specific videos. I'm gonna to try to get more active on septics here uh, as we're getting into the spring. So uh, if you want to see anything specific, you have any specific questions, uh, post them below. Thank you, guys.